Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now we've been talking about GCD and the Euclidean algorithm and there's one more theorem we want to talk about. It's going to be pretty helpful in the next section. And that theorem is that the greatest common divisor of A and B can be expressed A and B can be expressed as a sum of integer multiples of A and B. In other words, we can always write GCD of A and B as a linear combination AX plus BY where X and Y are integers. Now X and Y don't need to be positive integers. Of course, they're, at least one of them is going to need to be negative in general. Um, but we can always express it as this linear combination. And we'll see why this is useful later, but let's take a look at how we would do this. Uh, how we would find this linear combination. So I'm going to use the example we did before. GCD of 8 to 64 and 2 to 91. Remember that we found that this was equal to 3, but the way that we found it is what's going to be important. So I'm going to just redo this calculation. It would be good practice. Recall that 864, we found that to be 2 times 291, and our remainder was 282. Looking at 291, 291 equals 1 times 282 plus 9. 282 is equal to, what did we have, 31? I mean, yes, 31 times 9 plus 3, and 9, of course, equals 3 times 3 plus 0. So my GCD is 3 with our Euclidean algorithm. Now I'm going to use these steps of the Euclidean algorithm to kind of unravel what this linear combination is. Now there's not a unique linear combination, but the process we're going to do here will give us one of the linear combinations. So what I'm going to do first is my GCD here is 3. So looking at this line right here first, I can say, well, 3 is equal to 282 minus 31 times 9, right, from this equation here. Now this isn't what I need. I need to get everything as 264s and 291s, but we're on our way, right? Now I have this 9 here, and in the previous equation, I have that 9 equals 291 minus 282. So I can make that substitution. I have 282 minus 31 times 9, but 9 we found to be equal to 291 minus 282. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify before our next substitution uh, by combining my 282's. This is negative 31 times negative 282, so that's a positive 31 times 282. So that's going to give us 32 times 282 minus 31 times 291. And now I can substitute in for 282 by using our very first equation. 282 is equal to 864 minus 2 times 291. So this is going to be 32 times 864 minus 2 times 291 minus 31 times 291. Now I want to simplify this down. I only have a positive 32 864's. Let's do that first. And over here, I'm going to have 32 times negative 2, so that's a negative 64 minus 31. So that's going to give me a negative, I'm going to write it as plus negative 95 times 291. And this is equal to my GCD3, right? That's what we started with. We haven't put anything on the left, so it hasn't changed. So if you were asked to find x and y such that it was a combination, my x here, if my a is 864, my x is 32, and my y is negative 95. Now these numbers are important later, once we get to modular arithmetic. Now this seems a little bit tedious, right? And in general, it's not too bad. That wasn't too bad what we just did. But there is a really convenient way to do this problem using matrices. And this is why we spent all that time in those previous videos talking about matrices, is so we can uh, use these little kind of matrix tricks to help us out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the system of equations 8, uh, what do we have, 8, 64 equals A and 291 
equals B. Now if I put this in a matrix, A and B are different variables. So this becomes the matrix 864, the augmented matrix of course, 1, 0, so that's 1A, 0 Bs, and 291, 0 A's, 1 B. So there's kind of a little invisible line here, right, where the equal signs is. This is my augmented matrix. Now the idea is, is we're going to perform the division algorithm by using row elementary operations. So this matrix, if I take 2, or if I multiply this bottom row by negative 2 and add it to the top row, this matrix is similar to 282, little, little dots, 1, negative 2, and then the bottom row hasn't changed, right? 291, 0, 1. Okay, so that's pretty much the same thing that we did in our first step of the Euclidean algorithm, isn't it? Here I've divided 864 by 291. I've gotten a remainder of 282, haven't I? Now, what's happening over here? Well, we'll see this at the end, but this is going to give us our linear combination. On the left-hand side, we'll get our GCD, and on the right-hand side, we're going to get our linear combination. So let's keep going. Our goal here is we're going to take the smallest number, only subtract a positive. We only want positives over here. I never want anything here to be negative, so I wouldn't multiply 282 by two, negative 2 again and get a negative down here, because we want this to emulate um, division, right? So I'm just going to subtract out uh, multiples of the smallest number where the whole multiple is less than the biggest number so I get that remainder between 0 and the previous remainder right so of course this is my in our Euclidean algorithm this 282 is my remainder 1 and this 291 is my B so now I'm going to divide B by uh, remainder 1 in other words I'm going to multiply this top row by negative 1 and add it to the bottom row so I'm going to have 282 1 and negative 2 on my top row, but I've subtracted 282 here, so I'm only going to have 9. Remember, this was our remainder 3, the way we just did it. And on the right-hand side, I multiplied that by this by negative 1 and added, so I have negative 1, 3. Okay, so my next division step, I'm going to divide 282 by 9. That's the same as doing this row operation. And remember how we had 31 9s? Well, it's no coincidence. I'm going to multiply this by negative 31 and add it over here. I choose negative 31 because I know that that's the most 9's I can put into 282 before going higher than 282. And just like in our Euclidean algorithm step, I'm going to get uh, 3 here. I still have 9, negative 1, 3 on the bottom. Now I've multiplied by negative 31, so that becomes positive 31 or 32 up here. And here, 3 times negative 31 is negative 93 plus negative 2 gives me a negative 95. And now we're kind of done, but just to see it, I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to divide 9 by 3, multiply this by negative 3, move it to the bottom, and of course now my bottom is going to have a 0, isn't it? So I'll have 3, 32, negative 95, and here for this row on 0, uh, I've multiplied this top row by negative 3. So we're going to get some big numbers. They're not going to end up being important, but let's go ahead and do it anyway. Here I'll get a negative uh, 96 plus negative 1, so that's a negative 97. And here, multiplying this 95 by 3, or by negative 3, I'm going to get a positive 285 plus 3, which is going to be 288. Again, these numbers aren't important. Um, this bottom row, but look at this top row. If I look at what this equation of this top row is, first of all, this is my first non-zero remainder, or sorry, first zero remainder. So my last remainder that was non-zero was three, wasn't it? So my GCD is three. And looking at this equation, three equals 32A, or 32 times 864 plus negative 95 times B, which was 291. Let's go ahead and check it. Is this what we had before? Absolutely it is. 3 equals 32864 plus negative 95, 291. So whichever method you like better, go with that method. But notice that here we had to do one process to find the GCD, 
and then we had to do a second process to find the linear combination. What we're doing with the matrix here is that we're doing both processes at the same time. In this half, I'm doing GCD, and while I'm doing the GCD on the left half, the right hand side is calculating the linear combination for me. It's basically keeping track of all of the steps that I have to take to find the GCD, and so instead of me having to then go and unwrap those steps again, the matrix has already done that. Pretty cool, huh? And we're going to be using a similar idea once we get into modular arithmetic to find something else, but this matrix method can be very handy, uh, and I hope that you take some time to become familiar with it. It can be extremely useful for you in this course. Now, that's all it for section 9.1, so we're going to go into our concluding section for the semester now, 9.2, which is modular arithmetic. We'll see you there.